The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. A warm welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday night. Let's begin with the news that the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well here in Antigua and Barbuda. That's the assertion by Trade Minister Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Terry, during his contribution to the budget debate in Parliament's lower house. The minister sought to shine a spotlight on several items being manufactured here in this country. And his overall message is... By local, as we hear from ABS's Rakeem Aparicio. But our people have gone even further. Look at this shoe, Mr. Speaker. It was not made by Tuds. It was not made by any known brands that you will all wear. But made right in Tegan Barbara by Top Ranking Limited. Trade Minister the Honorable E.P. Chet Green displays just a few of the wide array of items being manufactured right here in Antigua and Barbuda. I wanted a line from this corner of this, this, this side to the side, the, the end of the Prime Minister's desk, with all Antigua made products. And believe you me, we have enough to do that, to line this entire, what, one, two, three, four, five, six desks? The Trade Minister says the efforts of local entrepreneurs is a testament to this country's resilience in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. You hear that so many businesses have collapsed since COVID. Yes, some businesses have collapsed. But equally, Mr. Speaker, or correspondingly, some new businesses have emerged. These ventures, he argues, need the support of the public to continue to flourish. The government, he says, also has a part to play. It is not only young people taking to business. It is the government creating a pathway, a vehicle, for the intervention, the introduction of young people in business. Rakib Aparicio putting for APS News. Thanks so much, Rakib. Let's stay with news about the budget debate because government says its processes will become significantly more efficient as the digitization effort continues. Our Rakib Aparicio again recaps the comments from Information Technology Minister Honorable Melford Nicholas during his contribution to the budget debate in Parliament today. Here's more. We have been pursuing these ends incrementally since we came to government in 2014. But the ask is now to get to the position where we're going to be able to get to the integration. Minister with Responsibility for Information Technology, the Honorable Melford Nicholas, says the modernization and digitization of the various sectors will continue in 2022. Minister Nicholas explains the need for digitization became increasingly important as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. I recall that about 60% of the workforce had to work from home. And we were able to ensure that the government's operations continue to be sustained because people had the ability to work virtually. Several government ministries have already benefited from these efforts, with many more to benefit in the coming weeks. The health ministry adds, will receive a major boost following the implementation of a health information system as to the Sir Lester Bird Medical Center. The design process has been complete based on several months of consultations with all the technicians and the practitioners at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center. Uh, the matter has gone before the tendering process, and I believe in fairly short order that they should be able to go through a whole selection process. Ongoing digitization efforts will make way for the establishment of a new citizens portal. Minister Nicholas provides a progress update on its rollout. Technobrain is going to deliver for us a new citizens portal. They've already started the work. As a matter of fact, I believe Mr. Edwards, Luxmo Edwards, indicated to me that next week, the uh, engineers from Technobrain will be on island. As these advancements are made across ministries, Minister Nicholas says there will be a need to ensure staff members are able to utilize the new systems. What was once considered the GATE program, we were doing the uh, CADET program. We have now moved to transform that facility into a digital training academy. We have public servants from all across the spectrum. We'll go through the process in terms of how to utilize the application to get the best efficiency from it and how we are able to turn that into service, better service for the, for the community in which we serve. Rakib Aparicio putting for ABS News. Now, the Telecommunications Minister provided a progress report on local number portability. Minister Nicholas, who also holds the broadcasting portfolio, outlined an initiative to ensure online media outlets can be held accountable if they defame individuals. I would have heard from the Attorney General in his presentation um, yesterday that it is his expectation that we will finally have a full reading of the telecommunications bill 
so that we can codify the new requirements into law. And not only that, to bring in place a new regulatory authority. Telecommunications Minister Honorable Melford Nicholas outlining the latest on a key plank of his ministry's efforts to revolutionize the way the industry operates in Antigua and Barbuda. Also on the horizon will be local number portability. The public will be happy to know that we are already in the process of implementing the mobile number portability project. Uh, we would have signed... We'll get back to Minister Nicholas in a short while. In the meantime, let's tell you about this developing story. The government says agriculture continues to be high on its development agenda. Last fiscal year, farming, fishing and forestry contributed $32 million to the country's economic output and the push for import substitution and food security. Now, Ursula Charles Jr. recaps comments from two officials on GIS Presents last evening on the efforts being made to stimulate further growth in the agriculture sector. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown has repeatedly said food security, sovereignty and resilience are important to this country. According to the budget statement, the Ministry of Agriculture has received an allocation of $17.5 million this year. But what has been done on the ground to help farmers? Acting Extension Officer within the Agricultural Extension Division, Ike Fergus, says support is being provided, particularly for early career farmers. What we try to do is to offer some of our support services, such as technical advice, um, you know, regulatory support services, land preparation services, and um, land allocation services to these farmers. Plans are also afoot, he says, to boost the sector by encouraging more sustainable practices. The Ministry of Agriculture is somewhat in the, in the process of repositioning our, ourselves to um, offer more sustainable and more modern practices in, in agriculture so that to encourage efficiency, uh, production. These resolutions will also include hydroponics, crop diversification, increasing the value chain and water conservation measures to include drip irrigation systems. The Ministry of Agriculture has also spearheaded concessions for imports and reductions in water rates. Eligible for a, a duty-free concession um, for agriculture-related inputs um, whether it's fertilizers, tools, machinery, yes, we do offer that. Also, in recent time, the government has also uh, implemented a 25% reduction, 25% discount on water for farmers. Experts agree, though, there should be some industry from farmers. You have to do it as a business. And that is something that ECA preaches. Agriculture is a business. So... It depends on what you want to do and your willingness to invest into your business. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Meanwhile, the Agricultural Ministry and its partners are intensifying efforts to develop farming on Barbuda. Officials say they will ensure those efforts are not derailed by dry conditions or the quality of the water on the sister island. The ministry, the Inter-American Institute for Corporation on Agriculture and the Caribbean Research and Development Institute have been conducting training courses in several areas. Having traveling to Barbuda four or five times a year, seeing what's going on over there, I realized, look, let me have the training in the evening. They have been receptive to the training once I have the training in the evening. So for, for our part, once persons here, Ica, Cardi, um, supporting the Ministry of Agriculture, farmers will come out. Added to building human resource capacity, officials say several programs have been rolled out to support farmers and say the future is looking bright. For the 20 um, beekeepers, 10 came from Barbuda. For the, the crowdfunding project, we were able to construct a seedling nursery to support the Barbuda Council. We were able to construct a, a rapid multiplication bin to support the Sumatra's in George Secondary School. And we also installed about six to seven fully drip irrigation systems for farmers over there. The prospects for growing agriculture in Barbuda include beekeeping and a proposed return to the lucrative farming of peanut and cassava. For Barbuda, for example, we are trying to see how we can get the Barbudans to go back into peanuts, where mm -hmm. they can start to produce peanuts. Um, and the different types of, of, of crops that you can grow at certain time of the year. So utilizing the types of seeds, different types of seeds, in terms of those seeds that are drought tolerant. 
In other news now from Barbuda, the agriculture sector has received a major boost there on the Sister Isle. Resident British Commissioner to Antigua and Barbuda, Lindsay Thompson, donated equipment valued at over 30,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars to the Barbuda Council. This was provided in an effort to strengthen the island's agricultural program. While well, Chairman of the Council, Mackenzie Frank, and the recently appointed Chairman of Agriculture, Senator Fabian Jones, were in attendance to receive the donation. The equipment donated is intended to mitigate the hindrances caused by Hurricane Irma in 2017. The pressure was particularly felt in the once thriving production of high quality peanuts, which was another revenue stream for the island. Now, Thompson is quoted as saying, I'm delighted we are able to support the people of Barbuda with their agricultural objectives and hope this project puts the island back on the map for excellent local produce, end quote. Let's stay with news now from Barbuda because the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, the JCPC, has ruled against Barbudan John Mossington in his bid to receive documents in an appeal brought by Mackenzie Frank and Trevor Walker. Mossington had been seeking disclosure of documents as part of efforts to intervene in that matter. Now, in a ruling this month, Lord Briggs said, quote, after consideration of the application for permission for disclosure filed on behalf of John Massington, it is ordered that the application be refused, end quote. This is a major blow for Massington's efforts to intervene in the long-running legal tussle with the Attorney General over the Paradise Found Act, in which Frank and Walker had initially sought a declaration that the act had been tantamount to the compulsory acquisition of land by the state in violation of Section 9 of the Constitution. Now, the Court of Appeal uh, well, ruled in favor of the government, which triggered an appeal by Frank and Walker to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. The repeal of the Barbuda Land Act of 2007 is also a corollary dispute in the matter, but the government remains confident and the strength of its legal arguments will follow this story as it unfolds, of course, reminding you that that appeal is set to be heard by the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council in May of this year. Terry? Well, a man will be sentenced this week for the murder of an Antiguan woman in Anguilla back into 2019. Taito Goodwin's life was cut tragically short uh, in 2019 when she was stabbed to death in her Anguillan home by Glenville Hodge in September that year. Goodwin was a law student, former Miss Anguilla, and had participated in the JC's Caribbean Queen Show in Antigua as well as several other regional pageants. The jury in the murder trial had been unanimous in its guilty verdict in December of last year. Father of the deceased and uh, Antigua and Barbuda's former ambassador to Cuba, Bruce Goodwin, tells our newsroom Hodge will be sentenced in Anguilla this Thursday. Title Goodwin's uh, murderer continues uh, to weigh heavily on those who knew her best. We're also following this developing story. The Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ, has become the first court in this region to be accepted into the International Consortium for Court Excellence, or ICCE. ICCE is an international network of courts and other organizations dedicated to ensuring high-quality service delivery in court and judicial administration. With the membership, the CCJ has joined the ranks of several other law entities, including the Supreme Court of Singapore and the National Center for for, for states courts or, or states courts of the United States. Now, CCJ President Justice Adrian Saunders is quoted as saying, while we can proudly state that, the, that we are living our strategic uh, uh, vision of being a model of judicial excellence, excellence is not a static achievement. It is a non-stop cycle that requires continuous improvement, end quote. Justice Saunders says the court will continue to serve the region to the best of its ability. The announcement comes just a few months shy of the 17th anniversary of the CCJ CCJ's establishment in April. The CCJ is the final court of appeal for four states in the region, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, and Guyana. When we come back from this break, uh, Terry, well, we'll, uh, indeed, go ahead. An earthquake uh, with a magnitude of 5.4 on the Richter scale shook Antigua and Barbuda early this morning. The quake uh, woke many across the island at around 4 3 a.m. It, is, it was registered 58 kilometers northeast of Guadalupe, or 68 kilometers southeast of Antigua. The quake originated at a depth of uh, 19 kilometers below sea level. Earthquakes of magnitude 3.5 to 5.4 are usually often felt, but really cause damage. Well, although no major incidents were reported, social media was abuzz with reactions as those who felt it reported their experience. Others were unsure and sought verification. The tremor 
was also felt in neighboring territories. You felt it, Terry? No, I was fast asleep at four. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what about you? Did you feel it? All right, when we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to more of the national stories that we're keeping across this evening, including this one. More Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines arrived in this country as the national inoculation effort receives another shot in the arm. And later, we'll also tell you about what Trevor Walker had to say. The Honourable Member of Parliament for Barbuda disputes some of the numbers that were given by the Prime Minister about GDP growth this year. The Prime Minister responds upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Magico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long, but after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Janserv is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient, and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. Get the kind of value you love that's unmatched at Courts Now. We're unmatched in quality and prices. Get appliances, electronics, furniture, and much more. You will love it. Get it now and pay nothing for 30 days with Ready Finance. Plus, shop now and get a chance to win a luxury staycation for two. Now that's unmatched value. Only at Courts. Bringing value home. Special conditions apply. Offer ends February 28, 2022. Welcome, a versatile and dynamic SUV, the Toyota Rays. Pick your engine, the fuel-efficient 1200cc or the vibrant 1000cc turbo. Accessorized with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Amazing luggage space and monthly payments as low as $716. Jump into a Toyota Rays today. Raise your style. Raise your confidence. Raise your vibe. Hardy Motors Limited on Factory and American Roads. Call 462-1062 or visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or HarleyMotorsLimited.com. Thank you so much for staying with us now. More developments from Parliament this afternoon, actually. Member of Parliament for Barbuda, Honorable Trevor Walker, challenged the growth rate of the country's economy as presented. He says the country's growth rate, according to the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, is lower than what Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown would have reported during his budget presentation. Antigua and Barbuda, 1.76%. Dominica, 3.1%. Grew more than Antigua and Barbuda. St. Lucia, 6.35%. Antigua and Barbuda recorded a growth of 1.76% in 2021. You'd have heard Trevor Walker there in Parliament in his budget presentation saying the Twin Island state has fallen significantly behind other countries in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Uh, information received by ABS uh, Television and uh, ABS uh, indicating that the ECCB estimates and projections for 2021 to 2023 have indicated that growth in Antigua and Barbuda was 5.3 percent, 5.3 percent. The 2022 forecast based on the ECCB estimates and projections for 2021 to 2023 is 4.7% in 2022. So again, ECCB estimates indicating that, as indicated by Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown in his budget presentation, growth in Antigua and Barbuda, real GDP growth, was 5.3% in 2021. And the forecast, the projection for 2022, is 4.7%. In addition, the IMF has indicated in its recent Article 4 consultations just finished uh, earlier this month, indicating that Antigua and Barbuda's real gross domestic 
domestic product would have uh, expanded by 4.8% in 2021. The IMF is usually more conservative than some of the other multilateral agencies, but the ECCB uh, indicating that Antiguan Barbuda had a growth rate of 5.3% in 2021. IMF saying 4.8%. Much more on this developing story because Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown has indicated he's responded. Of course, he will wrap up the budget presentation. But in the meantime, he's responded, indicating the Member of Parliament for Barbuda has sought to deceive the people once again. The rate of growth of 1.67% that he quoted is the projected rate as of June 2021. The information he quoted is stale information designed to deceive, obfuscate, and malign. And a response there from Prime Minister Brown, the Minister of Finance, in response uh, to the queries that were raised and the assertion made by Member of Parliament Walker. Terry? In another area of interest, Antiguan Barbados COVID-19 inoculation program is receiving another boost through a donation of over 30,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccines donated by the U.S. government are arriving over a three-day period, the first batch arriving at the V.C. Bird International Airport earlier today. There are 10,800 doses included in each installment. Let's start with the news about COVID-19 because active cases of the viral infection in Antigua and Barbuda have increased by one to 582. Now, as of 6 p.m. on February 9, 82 samples were processed, yielding 11 new infections. The country also recorded an additional 10 recoveries. The latest infections bring the country's overall COVID-19 tally since the start of the pandemic to 7,342. One patient, in the meanwhile, remains in hospital with moderate symptoms. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment is launching a campaign to lower the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages under the theme, Less Sugar, Longer Life. The initiative is being supported by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. The aim is to spread more public awareness on the dangers of excessive sugar consumption and promote more water in their diet. With studies showing 70% of students in the country consume more carbonated drinks than water in 2021, the Ministry of Health urges residents to adopt healthier lifestyles and increase their physical activity. The ministry says reducing the consumption of these sugar-sweetened beverages is vital for fighting obesity, poor dental health, and non-communicable diseases such as diabetes. The initiative will be promoting sugar-sweetened beverage alternatives on all media platforms with activities, educational sessions, and supermarket tours. Well, two-time Antiguan Olympian Carl James is sharing his excitement and privilege at being honored by Queen Elizabeth II. He told Tuesday's Antigua Barbuda today he's, he's humbled by the recognition. James is now a member of the most excellent order of the British Empire, MBE. When I learned of it, I, I didn't really you know, think of it as a big deal. And it really dawned upon me um, a couple of weeks ago when I saw Clive Lyde, the former Western um, captain, got an, um, a CB or something like that. And then as I journeyed to the UK, you know, and um, people recognized that I, I was getting an MB. Well, James's focus continues to be teaching young people about the sport, and he also looks forward to more sailing competitions. The development of sailing is still, um, you know, on the forefront of what I would like to continue to do. And at the same time, you know, I was thinking of doing a world championships myself in Mexico later this year. So okay. uh, I'm still competing. The 54-year-old represented Antigua and Barbuda at the 1996 and 2000 Olympic Games. He joins national hero and cricketing legend Sir Isaac Vivian Alexander Richards as the only locals to have received this honor from the Queen. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to more of the stories that we're tracking. This time, we'll go overseas. One of those stories we'll be hearing from Barbados, where uh, the private sector there responds to adjustments in COVID-19 restrictions. And internationally, the U.S. and its allies are still concerned about a Russian incursion in Ukraine, uh, despite Russia saying it has withdrawn some troops from the border. These stories are all ahead for us right here on the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back 